Welcome to the deep dive. You know how this works. You give us the sources, we pull out the key insights, and, well, we all get up to speed together quickly. Mm -hmm. Today's deep dive is all about something you flagged. This potentially huge update to OpenAI Codex. We're working from that document you sent, new OpenAI Codex.pdf. That's right. We're looking specifically at the May 2025 update. And the big story, really, is how Codex is changing. It's not just a coding assistant anymore. No. Now, they're positioning it as an uh, autonomous cloud coding agent. It's quite a leap. Okay, autonomous agent. That's the key phrase, isn't it? It really is. So what does that actually mean in practice? How is it different from you know, what Codex used to be? Well, the fundamental change is it's gone way beyond suggesting snippets of code. Right. Now it's this cloud-based entity, I guess, a software engineering agent that can handle multiple coding tasks at once. Multiple tasks. Yeah, concurrently. And each task runs in its own separate, secure cloud environment, a sandbox. Mm. So think of the old codex as like a really good pair programmer sitting next to you. Yeah, I remember that analogy. This new version. It's more like an AI project co-developer. It can actually go into your code base on its own, figure things out, make the changes. Wow. Run tests to check its own work and then package it all up as a pull request for a human to review. So it basically takes a task from start to well, almost finish. Yeah. Needs that final human check. Exactly. And for each job, it spins up a fresh sandbox preloaded with the code repository it needs. Okay. AI project co-developer. Mm. That really reframes it. It's not just assisting. It's like doing parts of the development. Precisely. And the big takeaway there for you is the potential speed up in development cycles, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So is it still good with lots of different languages? My projects tend to be all over the place technologically. Yeah, the document confirms it keeps that broad language support. This new model, Codex 1, it's still fluent in Python, JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, pretty much the works. That's good to hear. So where's it actually being used? Are there examples in the document? Oh, yeah. Quite a diverse set. The pilot partners they list. They include enterprise sauce companies, folks making developer tools, even autonomous vehicle software businesses. So a real mix. A real mix. It shows it's being applied across the board, UI components, front-end work, back-end services, um, data science libraries. They even mention Astropy for scientific Python specifically. Oh, that's Interesting. Yeah, and DevOps scripts too. You know, linters, test setup, CI stuff, even some specialized systems code. So the implication is it's pretty adaptable. It could likely handle tasks in most modern tech stacks. That seems to be the message, yes. Sure. From cloud apps to robotics, it's showing up. Okay, versatile. Now, you mentioned parallel tasks earlier. The document calls it parallel task execution. This is where it gets really interesting for me. Mm -hmm. Walk me through this multi-agent thing. Are we talking about like multiple codices working at once? The headline here feels like speed, big speed improvements. That's exactly it. You can essentially launch multiple codex agents at the same time. Each one gets its own sandbox, its own isolated environment. So you could have one agent working on say a new feature okay. while another agent is busy improving test coverage for a totally different part of the application. Ah, okay. So you can delegate. You can delegate, especially those tasks that are kind of repetitive or time consuming, but necessary. Think about refactoring old code or renaming variables consistently across a huge project, or even just generating basic boilerplate tasks. Things that slow developers down. Exactly. By farming those out to these agents running in parallel, you avoid that bottleneck. It creates a, well, a multi-threaded development workflow, effectively. That could seriously change how teams operate, especially under tight deadlines. But how do we know the code it writes is any good? Is it reliable? That's a crucial question. The key insight here must be verified code, right? Mm. You can't just spit out code. It needs to be tested. And that's where the integrated testing and tool execution features come in. It's not just writing code. It can automatically run your tests unit tests, linters for style checks, type checkers for correctness as part of its process for completing a task. So it runs the tests itself. Yes. And the really interesting part, it iterates. If the tests fail, it'll try to debug and fix its own code until they pass. Like a human developer would. Exactly like a human developer. And all this happens safely inside that cloud sandbox. So there's no risk to your actual development environment or production systems. And you get proof that it worked. It doesn't just say tests passed. Precisely. When it finishes, it gives you verifiable evidence. You get terminal logs, you get detailed test results, other outputs. 
a clear audit trail. Okay, that's important. So if it fixed a bug, for instance, you'd see the test results showing the failure before the fix and the success after. Concrete proof. That's compelling. Can you customize that sandbox environment to well, match, say, our specific setup? You can. You can specify a Docker image or provide setup scripts to make sure the AI's environment mirrors your local dev setup or your CICD pipeline really closely. That level of transparency and control feels essential, especially for bigger companies or regulated fields. Now, what about these human guidance files? There's mention of an agents at MD file. What's that for? Think of agents desk at MD as um, like a cheat sheet you give the AI agent for your specific project. A cheat sheet? Yeah. It's how you tell it about your team's specific ways of doing things. Project norms, standard operating procedures for codex, basically. Like what, for example? Like maybe you always need to run NPM run build before executing tests. Or your team has a very specific Git branching strategy you need it to follow. Oh, okay. Project-specific rules. Exactly. Yeah. Coding style guides, required language versions, how to run the app locally. You put that guidance in agents.mg. It helps Codex fit smoothly into different tech stacks and workflows, whether it's you know, a data science project with unique notebook setups or a mobile app with a complex build system. So it tailors the AI's behavior. But what if you don't have one? Does it still work? It does. The wow. document makes a point of saying the base Codex 1 model performs well even without this file. They've tested it on large code bases, apparently up to 192,000 tokens, which is quite large. Okay, so it's got a good baseline, but the file lets you fine-tune it. Let's talk more about this Codex 1 model itself. It's described as optimized for code. What does that actually mean for a developer using it day-to-day? -day? What are the benefits? So Codex 1 isn't just the general OpenAI model. It's a version specifically fine-tuned using uh, their latest O3 family models, but honed for software engineering tasks. Fine-tuned how? Tuned to better understand natural language instructions about code and to generate code that looks more like what experienced human developers would write. More idiomatic, better practices. And the result is? The practical result is cleaner code patches. They're easier to read, easier to review, and crucially, they have fewer unnecessary changes compared to what you might get from a more general AI model. Fewer unnecessary changes. That alone could save a lot of time in code reviews. Absolutely. It cuts down the noise. They've also trained it on like pull request etiquette. Etiquette for an AI. Yeah. Things like keeping change sets minimal and focused, writing clear commit messages. It's also just better at sticking to the user's instructions. OpenAI claims it adheres precisely to instructions more often and makes about 20% fewer critical errors than the previous version. Okay. Cleaner code follows instructions better, fewer errors. That sounds genuinely useful. So we've covered the tech. Let's zoom out. What's the impact on actual enterprise software development? The document mentions boosting developer productivity first. How does that work? Well, by taking over those tedious, often draining tasks, it frees up developers to focus on the harder, more creative problems. Right. The stuff that requires real thought. Exactly. OpenAI's own engineers are apparently using it for big refactoring jobs, renaming things consistently, generating boilerplate tests, even drafting initial documentation. So that breaks your flow? Completely. Mm -hmm. All those things that interrupt deep work and eat up time. By letting Codex handle that kind of heavy lifting in the background, it reduces context switching, less mental drain, which should lead to faster development cycles, shipping faster. It's like having an extra pair of hands. Kind of like having an ever-available junior developer, as the document puts it. It takes on the well-defined stuff, freeing up your senior people for the complex architecture or tricky bugs. Makes sense. But it's not just individual productivity, is it? The doc talks about team workflows changing, new asynchronous ways of working. How does it change collaboration? It definitely hints at a shift towards more async and parallel work. Teams can define a task clearly, Assign it to a Codex agent. Like creating a ticket for the AI. Sort of, yeah. Implement this feature flag, update the CI configuration. The agent works on it in the cloud while the human team members focus elsewhere. So work gets done overnight, maybe? You could imagine morning standups, including reviewing pull requests submitted by Codex agents overnight. It enables more of an autopilot mode for certain tasks, obviously with human oversight still crucial. Interesting. Cisco, one of the pilot partners, talks about moving from linear development to massively parallel ideation and execution. Wow, massively parallel. Yeah, the idea is you have humans and AI agents all working concurrently on different pieces, which the team then integrates. 
That's a fundamentally different way of building software. What about DevOps and QA? Often bottlenecks, right? Quick time. And Codex seems designed to integrate deeply there. Because it can run tests and linters automatically, it provides immediate feedback on its own changes. Okay. Think about routine maintenance, like updating a library across dozens of microservices. But yeah, painful. Codex could potentially handle that, ensuring all the tests still pass across all services. That saves a huge amount of manual effort. Any other examples? Some early users are apparently trying it for on-call issue triage. Really? Having Codex attempt some initial automated fixes and run tests before it even pages a human engineer. That could be huge for on-call burnout. And QA. In QA, it could potentially generate new test cases to improve coverage or even automatically try to reproduce bugs based on user reports. That leads to more reliable software, faster CI-CD pipelines. Basically, AI agents could smooth out those common bottlenecks in review, testing, and deployment. It also sounds like it could help with upskilling and maybe even let non-coders do more. The document mentions product managers making minor changes. That's a really interesting aspect. Because it understands natural language, the barrier to entry for simple code changes gets lower. So a PM could tweak some copy or adjust a configuration value. Potentially, yes. Yeah. The pilot programs saw PMs doing things like that, still needing engineer review, of course, but not requiring an engineer to actually write the code initially. That could speed up small iterations or experiments a lot. And for junior devs. For junior developers, it could act like a mentor. The code it produces often follows good practices, so it's learning by example. And it can help them figure out trickier bits of code. So it raises the whole team's baseline productivity. That seems to be the idea. Cisco calls it a productivity and innovation multiplier. If the AI handles more of the routine stuff, the team has more brain power for new ideas, complex challenges, delivering more value. Any evidence of that yet? Early signs, according to the document, suggest small teams using Codex are achieving output levels that previously needed much larger teams. Which brings us to the money question. ROI, costs. It's free initially for business users, which is great for trying it out. Right, through ChatGPT Pro, Team, Enterprise during the preview. But long term, what's the thinking on cost versus benefit? The plan seems to be usage-based pricing eventually, but the core argument is that the time saved faster development, fewer bugs to fix later, quicker time to market should significantly outweigh the cost of using the AI. So faster features, higher quality software. Those are the ROI drivers. Exactly. Plus, it adds flexible coding capacity. Need to handle a spike in workload, spin up more codex agents, rather than trying to hire rapidly. But it's not magic, right? The ROI depends on using it effectively. Absolutely. True ROI depends on teams really integrating it into their workflows, learning how to collaborate with the AI effectively. It requires adaptation. But the potential is there to, as Cisco puts it, fundamentally redefine the way organizations approach engineering. Okay, incredibly powerful potential. Now, to get a better sense of where this fits in the bigger picture, the document compares it to Google DeepMind's Gemini 2.5 Pro. Let's touch on the key differences. How do they stack up on language and domain support? Both are very capable multi-language models, but they have slightly different flavors. Codex has that deep grounding in GitHub code, lots of reinforcement learning across different environments. It's proven in enterprise use cases and has that huge context window, 192K tokens mentioned. Which means they can understand really large code bases. Right. It's strong across the full stack, web, mobile cloud, data science. Gemini 2.5 Pro is also multi-language, but seems to particularly shine in web development UI stuff. It even did well on benchmarks, building web apps visually. And multimodal. Video to code. Yeah, that's a unique strength for Gemini. It also has a large context window, over 100k tokens, and has tackled complex backend refactoring. So both powerful, but maybe different sweet spots. Okay, Codex may be broader enterprise grounding in context. Gemini may be stronger on web UI and multimodal. What about accuracy and reliability? Who makes better code? Uh, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Codex is explicitly designed for high fidelity code, sticking closely to instructions and style guides. And critically, it often runs tests before suggesting the code. The verification step. Right, plus it provides the logs and test results as proof. Human review is still essential, but the process aims for verified output. Gemini 2.5 Pro is positioned as Google's most advanced model. Top scores on benchmarks, better reliability and structured output, high pass rates on coding challenges. So strong reasoning. Very strong reasoning, which could mean fewer logical errors. But the testing part isn't as built in. You typically need to instruct it or build a system around it to run tests. Human validation is still key there too. 
So Codex has more automated built-in verification via testing. Gemini relies more on its raw reasoning power and benchmark performance, with testing being more of a user implementation detail. How about integrating them into developer tools, IDEs, workflows? Codex has that native integration in ChatGPT, which is pretty seamless for many users, plus direct GitHub workflow integration for PRs and commits, and there's a CLI for local sandbox use. Deeper IDE integration is likely coming. Okay, and Gemini? Gemini is more API first. Accessible via Google AI Studio, Vertex AI, this makes it flexible for integration into almost anything IDE plugins exist for platforms like Replit and Cursor, and others can build on the API. It fits naturally into Google Cloud and Vertex AI's MLOps features for DevOps teams. So codex.easierstart, tighter GitHub link, Gemini.ini, more flexible API, good for Google Cloud users broader potential integration points via API. That's a fair summary, yeah. What about team features? Collaboration. Codex seems built with teams in mind, especially with ChatGPT team. Multiple devs can work with it, delegate tasks, use that agents s.md for shared standards. It even potentially empowers non-devs for simple tasks, plus enterprise controls. And Gemini for teams. Gemini facilitates collaboration mostly through the platforms it's integrated into, like Replit or Colab. The core model itself isn't inherently multi-user like Codex in ChatGPT team. Enterprise access is via Vertex AI. It supports the idea of agentic programming, but it's less plug and play for team collaboration right now compared to Codex. Team benefits are more from individual productivity boosts. Got it. Codex has more built-in team structures currently. Finally, the big one. Autonomous behavior. How do they differ here, especially since Codex is marketed as autonomous? Codex is explicitly designed as an autonomous agent, but within strict limits. It gets a task, works independently in its sandbox for, say, up to 30 minutes, runs tests, iterates. But it's contained. Very contained. Sandbox environment, no internet access by default, stops if tests fail. Crucially, human review is mandatory before merging, and you can always hit the abort button. It's trained for alignment, minimal, relevant changes. And Gemini's autonomy. Gemini is the powerful engine you could use to build an autonomous agent, but it isn't one out of the box in the same way. You need to implement the agent loop, execute, test, iterate yourself externally. So more setup required. Yes. It benefits from Google's AI safety work, but the onus is more on the developer using the API to build in safety checks and validate the results. Its basic API nature is single turn, which allows for step-by-step -step supervision if you build your agent that way. Okay, so Codex, ready to go, within limits. Autonomous agent experience with built-in guardrails. Gemini, powerful model for building custom agents, offering more flexibility, but requiring more user implementation for the autonomy and safety layers. Exactly. That captures the core difference well. Well, this has certainly been a, uh, a proper deep dive. It's fascinating to see Codex make this leap towards being an autonomous coding agent. It really is. And understanding how it sits alongside powerful alternatives like Gemini gives us a much clearer picture of where things are heading. Definitely. Codex's ability to just, you know, take a task and run with it, handle testing, work across different domains, plus the potential impact on team workflows, it's significant. And as we saw, both models are pushing the boundaries just with slightly different approaches and strengths. And for you listening in, these changes could really reshape how you think about software development, maybe even how your own projects or business operate. There are new possibilities for efficiency here. Which brings us to a final thought for you to chew on. If AI collaborators like these become commonplace, what does that future actually look like? What new opportunities, sure, but also what new challenges might pop up as this tech keeps evolving? Something to consider how might you adapt or even leverage these changes.